a very good morning to you. Uh, happy Engineers Day as well. Um, well, I was asked to address and given a brief saying address batting engineers. So on an engineer's day, what should batting engineers think about when they want to enter the professional world and that to an IT professional world. So I'll try and do justice to the time. 15 minutes is hopefully I'll take and give some perspective of what I believe uh, professionals in IT industry should aspire to do. Um, by starting at Ganpat with so many academic and industry collaboration, I'm sure you're getting the right foundational education that is needed. Uh, but is grades enough? Is marks enough when you get into the professional world? And that would be a question that a lot of you would have in your mind uh, as you study through this four years of engineering. Some of you may do post-graduation, a lot of you may enter the professional world. So before we get on to what does IT profession need, I think any profession needs this basic equation E is equal to MC square. And I'm not talking about energy. I'm talking about what is the expectation of industry from any professional. The M is not the inertia or the mass. It is the matter, the gray matter, the intelligence that you bring to the company that you join or to the industry that you join. The C square that depends and represents the confidence with which you go and do your work, confidence with which an engineer looks at a problem and solves it, and the commitment and the dedication that they bring to table. So what is different when it comes to IT industry? Are there more qualities needed besides good marks, good curriculum, industry-ready curriculum, like what we're trying to do with the computer science and business systems program? Is it something else that we should look at? And yes, you should. And the equation there for me is E is equal to LC cube. Yeah, I mean, C has become from square to cube. We are in a complex world. So there has to be something more. So what does the L in that equation stand for? L stands for learning. Now you will say, what is education and learning? Is it different? Um, theoretical education, studying theories is one part of it. Learning through experience is another part of it. So there are a lot of platforms, opportunities uh, available for all of you to learn through experimentation, learn through practice. Uh, you are in an era where we didn't have those opportunities for us. When I started, our computer lab was four PC-80 machines and we really had to book time to work on it. While for you, you have a laptop at home and there's cloud available. Participate into coding challenges, hackathons, uh, participate into learning such uh, mechanisms, do projects with the industry. So that's about doing experiential learning. But when you get into the profession, an IT professional will continuously need to keep learning. Many of you would say four years of education, under graduation, 15 years or 16 years of schooling, or maybe 18 years if you're doing post-graduation, isn't that enough? Um, my take is no. Why no? If you look at how IT industry is revolutionizing, we are currently sitting on the digital evolution or the digital revolution that's going on. But let me step back 27 years when I entered career. What is it that was looking at? And let me take an example of music. Okay. Um, we used to have a cassette player. Used to get our songs recorded, go to some agency with a list of songs they'll record it. And some people who would like be very passionate about one particular song will only ask that same song to be recorded on the whole side of the cassette so that they can hear it in loop. Cut forward today. What do you do? Hey Alexa, hey Siri, play my favorite song in loop. And that's it, right? Where did the song come from? It came from cloud. There's no agency to go to. Your favorite song will keep changing. You don't really have to worry about it. And you can just play it as many times as you want till you command the Alexa or Siri to stop. But between this 27 years, the music industry went through a digital change, right? So from a cassette player, we went on to a Walkman. The headphones of the Walkman still continue to be around with the earbuds now. From Walkman, we went into MP3 and CDs. That's when it became digital. From there, we got those iPods and then it all went into streaming, right? And it's cloud. And cloud has brought up real different way of how we can leverage it. So in this 25 years, you have gone through five changes in technology. I can talk about similar examples when it comes to data storage or database systems. When we started, there was one database system. We used to write to files and read files. There was one database system called DBase. Then came Orleans and Now it's still exploring. 
ஜிக்கலி <laughs> after having got a foundation of studying engineering get into the industry that means every third fourth year your industry is going to look at a new technology that's where you should have the ability to continuously keep learning so that comes to the next question is the c cube and why i say c cube i'll bring the curiosity of the c cube first can you keep learning the way you learn when you are uh, doing a undergraduate program or a postgraduate program wherein your dedicated time is only studying when you're working and you're in IT industry, each one of you earns money for the company that you work for, right? So you would have to constantly learn. Yes, there are platforms like Udemy, Coursera, many things are available. Wherever you go, there will be investments for you to learn. But I guess the biggest learning comes from being curious. So there's the first C of the CQ. Be curious about everything, about technology as well as business. And I'll talk about why business a bit later. with curiosity is the ability to question right unless and until you have the ability to question you're not going to bring knowledge google search has made life very difficult or simple whichever way of the coin sides of the coin you want to look at it anything you want to know curiosity can be answered by quora no it just gives you an answer but if you develop the inherent attitude or behavior of being curious there's lot that goes into your brain and it stays there it stays there pass it into your mind and comes back when you need it that doesn't happen when you go to quora you just get an answer you process it for a point in time and it goes away the second scene in the c cube is communication now nothing new about it right i i think you all have heard you have to be a good communicator in the number of time but if i look at the situation that covid has brought into and the disruptions or the changes that covid has brought into us there's a lot more virtual that's happening a lot of it professionals would be reading or it students would be reading that the whole it industry is talking about a hybrid work model wherein you'll go to office for a few days and you will work from home and there'll be a lot of virtual collaboration because all the zoom and google meet and teams and many other collaborative tools which are available by which we will do so collaborating in a virtual world would need extremely different communication skills that you should have a very simple example if all of you were working with me in a physical space together you walk in and i can understand from your body language whether you are in the team or you are actually superficial and outside the team right and as a manager i would without even talking to you just by your body language in the non verbal communication be able to understand this person needs some mentoring some help some support i need to spend time this totally goes away in the virtual environment virtual environment maybe if this event was being done virtually okay i would have felt that i am a ghost talking to people i don't know because even if i see them on a video screen they will be postage size and i just don't know what's happening right you will have to learn how to communicate so earlier it was the manager's job to find out this person needs support now it becomes your own job to go and say i need this help i need this direction i need this guidance and be confident about asking it so that's one change that you will look at communication to you i'm not talking about communication being good in english language strong in english language being able to write po- poetry and prose i'm not talking about that all i'm saying is it should be very simple precise effective you should be able to put your viewpoint forward and learn a lot of whiteboarding and storytelling skills in one of our recent calls i was trying to explain the team some concepts i was trying to speak and then i re- realized i'm getting into a dead end i just took a piece of paper drew a sketch took a photograph and then pasted it on the uh, collaboration uh, channel and in 2 minutes everybody understood what i was saying maybe 15 minutes in words i was trying to explain so those are the type of communication skills that you will have to look at developing of course your spoken english or spoken communication will continue to be relevant but these are many more areas that you have to look at and the third c in the lc cube equation is about context context and context of the business and context of the technology and where i let me go back a little bit today or when it industry started where was it getting used in industries 
it was getting used in industries to optimize either it would help me save cost it would help me run processes faster it will cut down the time it will give me more reach it used to do all of that right but something that the industry was doing we were able to help them do it much much better with all the digital technologies that have come in whether it is cloud whether it is ai ml whether it is automation whether it is new methodologies like agile there's just an explosion of technologies all around right and what are businesses now using it for they're not using just for optimization they are seeing it as an enabler or it is a mechanism to create exponential value look at new business models which integrate it in itself and comes up right so when they trying to do that you as an it professional will need two aspects one is a good knowledge of technology you may not be master into everything right but you will have to just have good amount of knowledge about all the technologies how these technologies put together can create something new the business doesn't understand technology but it is you who should have the ability to contextualize the technology into a business situation and say this maybe if i put iot here and something that goes to the cloud and a machine learning here i think on the automotive side i can make a change these ideas will be coming from it professionals and not coming from business so your contextual knowledge or your ability to understand the business context is very very critical and then when i looked at the curriculum of csbs that is getting introduced there is a huge emphasis on business systems because business is going to ask you what can i do unlike earlier business used to come and say can you automate this right they knew what was the other problem with our industry is people say okay we are a b2b industry and so are there many b2b industries so if i am an automotive component supplier who is also b2b but is very focused he knows his component will go into an automotive vehicle the vehicle will have this purpose he has to just perfect it make it better look at new technologies to make it much better right whether it is efficiency cost throughput whatever it has to give but we work for an industry wherein we build systems for our customers who in turn make it for their customers right so we will hands have to develop an understanding of many many industries and be able to collate ideas from various industries to be very very uh, successful in our careers and that's where the context comes in so that's what i would say as professionals yes curriculum uh, grades the curriculum that you study being industry ready and studying an industry ready curriculum is the one big step but these are the few things that you should always look at how do you build those characteristics in you how we will go on it so with that i wish all of you a very happy journey ahead great success with the csbs program and also like to thank uh, ganpat for giving us an opportunity to collaborate i'm sure we would make a difference thank you so much